Warning, the following video is delivered in teacher mode. Woohoo! <laughs> Hi everybody, we are here today. Um, I'm gonna let P take over here in just a second, but I wanted to kind of give you an intro and say hello. Um, we're very excited about this video. I think what you're hopefully going to learn today is that um, dyeing paper can be a lot easier than, you know, tea bags, coffee grounds, and other vegetables. and vegetables and other things so this is just one more option and what we love about this one is it's gonna be odorless and um, hopefully most of you have watercolors I would assume or something comparable comparable um, we're gonna be using watercolor crystals today but uh, I'll let P take over oh hello 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 Okay, well we've already started with that, so we really just need to put that aside. And we're going to focus on the huzzes. We're gonna do a color wheel, which shows you very easily. Why it makes life easier, well here and now. And big one here, how to do this. All right, why? Well, we'll get into that in just a minute. And I think that this will show you better why. All right, these are papers here. This is what the original looked like. This is what they became after using knowledge of the color wheel to neutralize a lot of the bright pink, some of them more so than others. But I'm going to flip these over in just a second and show you the back side because I think that's really where this whole process shines because it gives you options. I love options. Okay. Now, I'm going to move. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm kind of fumbly today. And I apologize for my voice. We drove around in the country yesterday, and dirt roads are not my uh, favorite thing. Okay. So, you can see these little round things here. Well, that was accomplished by putting brushos directly on a little piece of swatch of paper and stamping it and putting it on here. Now, isn't that brilliant? Plus, you have a cool looking little thing when you get finished. Put a little bit of bright colors here and there, just a sprinkle of brushos. That's what I love about them. Now, I will explain to you what this is on the edge here. That is certainly not intentional. But it, it's something to think about because if you have Mod Podge down, this is what happens. It can be a real factor as it adheres to your paper. And this paper has a little bit of a finish on it, which you can kind of see when I bring it over here. There's a finish on that. And not it's some printed, it's an actual from a paper pack. Yes, and, and the reason we have so many of these as we use them in scrapbooking. Uh, I think it was Izzy's, one of her birthdays or something. And we have a whole bunch of it left over, but it was like 99 cents for 25 sheets. I mean, how can you turn that down even if it is ugly? I think, I don't think it's ugly, but it's just not what we're... It's pretty busy. It's very busy and it's very pastel-y. So, you can see, I'll show you how to get that green gonna love it you're gonna love it and then these nice kind of coffee browns here's where I just place this little guy directly put a tape down so it doesn't get lost tape down I just put it down there and it sucked that into that space you can see a little bit on this one these are just some sprinkles so not only are you going to use the diluted brushos and watercolor crystals. Watercolor crystals, thank you. Um, we're not getting paid for any of the endorsements here, by the way. And I figure, you know, if they want me to tell you what we're using, then they should well, pay me something. Well, there are options. There are other yeah, brands. Yeah, there are other brands. You, you have options. So you can see, this is so beautiful. And when you have something that you've got a front and a back, you know, you just it, it just makes it life better. And that really brilliant blazing white, I mean, I, I don't know, I suppose some people would find that attractive. I'm not necessarily 
big fan of white white but you know you got you got options you got options all right now let me quickly show you the other one that I did prior to our little thing today and I actually um, you know a little more organized when I did this and, and mixing the neutral together you'll see here in a minute why you can't put down a recipe because it's totally just trial and error all right so you can see what the paper looked like here original form and these are what it became which you know I mean some of these I realize they're really almost exactly the same until you turn them over and then you can see the difference a blue green a blue blue yeah. and even though these are very similar you can Outery. see when you put them right next to each other they really are not and then you have this but look you're starting to see a family of blue and then you have your family of the peachy warm colors here and I did actually put brushes on here directly you got something sparkly in the mix it's the <laughs> it's what picked up from the Mod Podge on the boards and I, I will show you my boards here in a minute but on these I did put I can tell you what I used on them and um, I, I'll talk more about that when we actually get into making making mixing mix it match it colors okay why do we want to do this? Well, I always tell I, I tell my children, you should never never do anything unless you have a good reason to do it. Why? Knowledge is power. You can mix any color you want from a very limited palette. And what I'm talking about limited, I'm talking primary colors. You're going to save money because all of that paper that you have stacked up on shelves here and there, you're going to say, oh my gosh, look, I can drag that stuff up and I can actually make it go with what I already have or what I want to use. It's eco-friendly. You're not ad adding to a landfill somewhere. Okay. Now, where are you going to use this information? And at what time can you? Well, you can do it home at work or play. Mixing these colors, you can use it for posters. You can use this knowledge when you're mixing your nail polish to get a specific customized color. Hair color. I've used it. <laughs> I've actually used it back in the day back in the day uh, cake frosting I mean how frustrated do you get when you're trying to get a color and you need some maybe a neutral brown or whatever now I don't <laughs> recommend black black doesn't neutralize well in food coloring uh, wall paint you just you know you have you want you've got some leftover paint or you can buy the cheap samples at the hardware store yeah. Just somebody brought it back or just wanted the little mix. And then you can make it into something absolutely wonderful. Dyeing, you will be using transparent colors. This is like if you use RIT dye or, again, it's anything that's transparent because your cake frosting is transparent. Uh, I washed my granddaughter. We have a lot of mud around here. And that is because she's mixed all of her Play-Dohs together. Clay glazes, that's probably kind of out there. I don't know. I used to mix, mix up my own. Okay. Now, this is going to tell you how to mix neutrals intentionally, and I have a smiley face here because I remember someone's comment once. It was like, I just see all those beautiful things that people do with those sprays, and they look so wonderful and everything, but mine turns to mud. Well, I'm going to tell you how that happens. Okay. Now, basically, we're going to, and I, I've changed this around because I decided I would start with my brighter colors and then move into the neutrals and the reason is is because I'll already have it here and it'll be very very easy to do when you have neutrals that are mixed you create if you have mixed these you have a neutral but when you put them next to each other just think about Christmas red and green uh, Broncos Football team, I know that because my son's a big Bronco fan. Blue and orange and yellow and violet. And I'm trying to think something's yellow and violet. And I'm just thinking, the only thing, oh. pansies is the only thing I can think of. I can't think well, of. if you want more sports team stuff, I think it's maybe I, the Vikings or somebody. I'm sure. I don't, comment below. Yeah, comment <laughs> below if you can tell me where, who, who uses the yellow and violet as their that's the stuff excitement word, color. Okay. And we like them next to each other because they create contrast. I mean, look at these lovely blues next to the oranges here. Aren't these, I mean, 
my gosh, this is just absolutely fabulous. And when you put them next to each other, you have a bling bling spot. That draws the eye to that area. So, we're accomplishing a lot of things here today. We're also, and here we have an example of, we have our warm colors, and we have our cool colors. So when you put them together, you, you make a nice balance. And I think that's really, 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 really important. Speaking to the opposite. Yes, all right, now I'm gonna do this quickly. So, if you want to make your own little color wheel, it is so simple. You just remember, draw a triangle. Triangle, and the yellow is always at the top then you know that you've got red and blue. And when you mix your primary colors, you get secondary colors. So, yellow and blue is green, red and blue is violet, yellow and red is orange. Voila, okay. So, now we have our color wheel here. So now we're gonna get down to business. And I'm going to be referring to this off and on all through the video. So if you want to pause and make your own little color wheel, because I'm probably going to have, I don't have a lot of room here, so I wanted things to be, you know, right there in front of you. And uh, you might want to do that right now, because it, it really is. Just remember, yellow at the top, violet at the bottom. You got it. Pause and draw. Pause and draw. Pause and draw very quickly. Okay. Now. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm back. I, I poured some water into some little um, dishes, and I can't remember. I think those are hummus. Anyway, it's what we send Izzy to school with, and you know, they want individual things, which drives me crazy, but anyway. Okay. So basically what I've been doing here, I have these samples that I made of the brush of colors. And as you can see, I have black, and is that in the frame? Yeah. I have black and I have brown. And the brush is kind of cool because it really does it. The crystals pull out and they make different colors. When, and you can see there, you can see some blues, you can see some yellows, you can see some oranges and whatever. Well, that's what makes up brown. But the reason I like to use and mix my own neutral colors is because you have a lot more interesting color pulling out. And especially when we're doing a liquid version of the brushos rather than the crystals. So I keep I keep this in mind because sometimes I, if I want to make it darker, I will just grab the black and add a little bit of black. So basically the three colors that we're going to use today are um, a form of, now this is actually orange, and I think I want to use the sandstone because it has some different things in it. And I can't remember which one of these is sandstone. Here we go. Okay, this is sandstone. More subdued. More subdued. And it again, it's because of why. We've got complementary colors in here. You can see a little bit of the blue next to the orange. You can see where there's yellows, and you can also pick up a little bit of violet, which has already turned brown, which is what we want it to do. Now, the brilliant red is just brilliant red, obviously, but it makes a very nice pale kind of, I don't know, peachy, whatever. Okay, so here we go. Now, the sandstone, I really, I, I'm in love with that. I, I'm totally in love with that. I want to talk about these things, but I don't want to talk about it right now. Um, the sandstone, I love. It's just, and you can make it as dark or as light as you want. And I, I'm adding about, you know, five or six. I'm, I'm getting this pretty, pretty dark because I can always add water. Now, I just want to keep that handy. Don't let me forget about this. Right, right. All right, now to our brushes. I want to talk about this very quickly because this can make or break you. See this brush? Can you hear that? Didn't hear anything there, right? Nothing here either. Of these, I prefer this one. The reason is it picks up a lot of water, but it doesn't just absolutely drop it all in a big fell swoop like this. This is really nice if you're watercoloring and you want to put a lot of water down on the paper. 
this is the brush to go to. This brush moves it around nicely. So I'll just put those back over there. All right. So mix this dude up. Oh. Well, that's really wonderful. Okay, we need to get these out of the way because I don't want to mess these up. These are my coming quite handy. Uh, samples, yes, but they really are. I'll put them over here and hopefully not splash a bunch of stuff all over them. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So we've got three different things we're gonna do here. Three different patterns. Why don't you have another one? Oh, it's in here. Alright, as you can see this one, it's got some sparkly stuff on it. I'm very excited. Don't know what's gonna happen there. Some very subdued plaid that's kind of like, I don't know. It's like somebody's underwear. Um, very manly. Yeah, masculine. And these, and as you can see, I tore these out on the diagonal so I could get the little sun designs because we've got some ideas on our next journal on using suns. And so we're, I'm hoping that that's going to come into play. All right, now put this aside for just a minute and I'm gonna show you these little pieces that I tore off. And I reason I do, I left some I, I left some straight edge so you'll have you'll be able to see the difference between the straight edge cut and the nice torn cut which I, I prefer most of the time the torn cut because it picks up those edges so beautifully these little guys here didn't want to throw those away because I can dip these and try my color out to see if well, it's tester str strips tester strips strong enough I want to add some more take some more out and you can kind of see what's happening here with my little crystals down the bottom they need a bit more shaky shaky stir stir okay so don't throw these away if you decide to cut them off okay how do I do that wasn't that wonderful and don't throw these things away because this this will cut you this is what I use to tear my paper with and if you don't have one I highly recommend getting one I use this all the time it's well worth the money. Now, you, I've seen people, you can make them, if that's what you want to do, um, you know, go for it. Oh, yeah, I did actually make one that's not a small. A small version. But this is from the box on the um, from this. butcher paper, <laughs> freezer paper stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I used the whole box, so I covered a whole bunch of these little things here. And it's certainly made my life easier. And these are really nice. Well, here, let me just show you really quick. Okay, here's my straight edge. Now, you can see, that's good because it's a smaller cut. It's not quite so obvious, but it's still a nice little. And I, I use this also to spread glue with. It's, it really works for a lot of different. functional tool. Yeah, and isn't that, look at that ruler. Boy, that's a well-used ruler. All righty. Now, back to where we were. So, testers here. Put these aside for just a minute. Here we go with our first test. What I probably know before I ever even start this is this might be a little bit on the light side. But look at that. Then you've got these that you can hold next to it and you can say, okay, is that enough of a, I don't know. I kind of, I sort of like it. But go darker, it's just, it's like when you pick out a paint to paint a wall. It's going to look darker when, when it's, it's wet. wet. It's going to be lighter when it's dry. So, with that in mind, I'm gonna just lay that down right there. And I've got another little test piece here. I'm going to add a little bit more of this. What is this? This is <laughs> sandstone in the brush. This is when people would be in, in the video going, yeah, what, what is that? <laughs> Thank you, Mara. Okay, mixy mixy. And um, this makes a really nice little mixing tool here. And the reason, do you see why I have that now? It's because I'm. And she keeps all of those. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, I can. We'll, we'll have. I'll show you maybe at the end. Wipe that off a little bit. Now, I'm, I'm not worried about this contaminating so much. All right, now I don't want to use up all my strips in one fell swoop here. 
and then you just put it down beside the other one and you can make a comparison there. Okay, I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference. Okay, so what we can do next is we have some options. Remember I told you about dark brown and black? We can add those to get that to a darker. Always start off with the lighter dark brown rather than, you know, just go straight to the black. Unless you have perfected and you have noted and you know a mix. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A dash of this and a dash of that. Uh, yeah. And the whole thing you want to remember, it's always easy to add some more. It's kind of hard to take it out, although I can tell you how to do that too. Just add some more water if it gets too dark. All right, small increments. You can see how that changed. That changed. Yeah. Noticeably even in the dish. Yes, noticeably, even in the dish. Little tester here. I hope I'm being helpful. You are being helpful. <laughs> Okay, and turn it over. And I think you're starting to see. Yeah. There's a little bit there. All right, now let's, let's go ahead, add a little bit more, because I want them to be, I, I have this idea that this, this sun image here is going to kind of be important at one point. Oh. Mixy mixy. That's what nice. What's nice about these clear little dishes? Oh, and here I go mucking up my mm -hmm. wonderful heart. You can see through them to see the white paper, so you're getting a really good idea of what what you really have. Okay, I, I'm. You can see it's starting. It, it's starting to neutralize. We're not seeing so much of the orange as we're seeing that, and that's that's where we want to be. These little pieces, don't throw those away. You can use those. Oh yeah, little tags and all, we'll all keep kinds. All those bits. Of, yes. In, in bags, bits and bags. Bits and bags. Bits bag and bags. It and bag it. <laughs> all right, here we go. starting on the back for some reason? Um, I am, and I'll show you in just a minute why that is. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way. Start on the back because if you do it on the back and you do it on this freezer paper, it's going to stick, and you're not going to have to get your, well, I don't know. I, actually, my hands look pretty good because I haven't been doing anything for a few days. <laughs> Take a little break. Take a little break. Drove around the country yesterday and, you know, kicked off the allergies again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, if I like that, I'm, I'm done. I transfer it to one of my little, smaller little boards here. And the other thing I like about these little boards, you notice how flat this is. It's not going wee, 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 wee. Now, it will do a little wee, 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 wee. It, it, I mean, slightly, you can see. But it's not bad. It's not bad, and you won't have to bust out the iron, which, you know, I'm all about that. If you want this to be a little bit darker at this point, you've already got it on your little board, you can just add it. You could even ombre it. You could even ombre it, as Mariah said. If I had something mixed up, and you know, I might come back and do that. All right, I'm going to let you yep. take that away. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That looks fantastic. I, I think it does too, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do another couple, and yeah, and as long as I, I've got this on my board and I'm doing the same color, I don't really care, because I kind of like the idea that it's going to be a little bit splotchy and whatnot. Now, before we go ahead and do this, let's go ahead and make another, another color here. As remember, we've got our orange here, so we're going to put a tiny, tiny bit of what? What are we going to mix with our orange to make it a little more neutralized? Blue. Now, I these crystals are extremely concentrated, so you just need a bit of a tap. And I've got 
I'm going with the turquoise simply because, I don't know, it's just what I want to do. I like the turquoise. And really, sometimes I end up with a great big chunk of it. This turquoise is pretty intense, so we're going to be real. Start small. Start small. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, what's, see what's happening there? Wait, oh, yeah, that's the same. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> now, okay, that didn't do what I wanted it to do because that is a little bit on the green side. Can you see that? Grayish green. Green. All right, so we go back to our color wheel. And say, okay, what am I going to add to that to make it more so you don't see green, you don't see red, you don't see any color. You see a nice mellow brown there, so it's green. Well, we're, we have some options here. I'm going to go with scarlet. Wait till I can see it start doing something on the surface. All right, do you see that tiny little bit, how that changed that? All right. So, all right. I'm going to stop for just a moment because I just thought of something. I want to mix up another color real quick so we can do some ombre in here. Yeah. Okay, so I've got some blue there. Now, this is kind of yellow, so I've got my yellow. Now I've got my blue. So what I'm thinking here, I'm thinking just some plain red over here to maybe add a little sparkle to the edge. I don't know. But, you know, this is all... There, there's no real right way, wrong way. You just kind of figure it out as you go along. All right, that should do it. Now, what did I put in there? That is Scarlet. Scarlet's a good one. And sometimes I have been known to mix my reds because as you can see, the Scarlet is ever so slightly orangey. orangey. And you know, that's great. That'll be great with the blue, but I'm not so sure that that's what I want. So I'm going to take and add a tiny bit of brilliant red. And you can see it's a cool red. This is a warm red, but this is a cool red. And that's gonna make a nice little balance there. Brilliant red. All right. Doo -dee doo. Swirly, swirly. Okay, and now we're going to start. Oh, look at that. Now, see, is that not wonderful stuff? And that was just picking up some stuff here on. Now, if you want this a pristine all one color you need thing. You change out your boards each time. Yeah, you need to clean them up, change them out. And they will eventually get stained, and you can recover them or, you know, just whatever. Okay. <laughs> Now, I really don't want to mess up my blue right now, so I'm going to grab another brush. And I'm not going to touch it. Oh, wow. It looks like I didn't clean that one out too good. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. C'est la vie. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one right there. This one. On the others, I did, and this is the other nice thing about having a, having your stuff on a board that you can actually move, is you can run it and play with it. You can make it do whatever you want it to do. Now, we don't care about this so much because, you know, I'm not, but I think that's going to be absolutely lovely. Uh, got some nice stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. Now, have looked at this side. So, we've got a little bit going on there. I don't really, you know, I, I'm, I like that subtlety. Grabbing a little bit more of my other color to make it a little bit splotchy. Splotchy. Worn. Worn.
getting some graying out there. You can especially see out here. That's what I call it, kind of graying out. You don't always get brown, but you're going to get a neutral. When you mix red and green, you usually go into the gray. Get some really nice browns mixing, which I'm going to try that on the other sparkly stuff we've got going on here. All right, don't forget to turn it over because you need to pay attention to the other side. This paper is pretty thick. It, it, it's substantial because it's for scrapbooking. And I'm re I really, I, I, I like this. I like the, mm -hmm. I like that it's mellowed out. It's not such a stark contrast between the actual image and the background. And that was one of my goals here, is to just make it a little less standy outy. Gosh, there's some technical terminology for you standy folks. Standy outy. Don't, yeah. Don't want it to standy outy, then you got to do something else. Yeah, less contrast, I'm sorry. And these are going to be little pieces that we're going to use for tags. Now, if I have some rundown over here, I'm just, you know. Move it around. Move it around, move it around. I dab it, but, you know, she slaps my hand if I start dabbing things. That... Well, the reason that you, <laughs> the re you can dab it. And, and, you know, sometimes I do. If I have something that's running all over the place and it's a really dark color and you don't want it all over you or whatever, wherever you're placing it, you can. The reason I like to leave it like that is because it's going to concentrate and pool in certain areas, and you're going to have a much lovelier effect, especially on your blank, your backside. I didn't really like that. That was kind of hollering at me. <laughs> Just run around, and as long as it's wet, it's you're not going to have a really stark line there. That's going to blend out, and that's going to be well. Try to remember to come back at the end of the thing. Okay, now, enough of that. So we're going on to our next one, which I'm really excited about. This shiny stuff. I want to get these out of the way because I don't want to. want to talk about that. Just don't know if I want to talk about it. Okay, so these little things I have here, they're little glass jars and we got them Tuesday mornings, and we're so sad because our Tuesday mornings might be closing. We're not sure. We're not sure because we haven't been out. Um, <laughs> these are from my last experiment. I'm going to shake them because then you can see the bubble seat, that wonderful brownie turquoise. I'm going to bust that out in a bit. <laughs> but this is my, I think it's kind of purple. purple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost amethyst. Amethyst. The reason I love, well, I, you need a labeler. You're not, yeah, but I'm. that's probably not going to be the same because I, I just dump whatever's left over in these. This is lovely because you've got them. And then if you need some touch-ups or you need to do another one in the same color to match the others, then you've got it here in this little bottle. And I really, I love these. And I would assume that if it dries out, you would still be able to add water back to it and re-solubilize I, I, I 100% sure of that. Okay, what not to buy? This little jobber. Where's my paper towel? I can show you why we don't want this one. Okay, this is what happened when I tried to open it. <laughs> this but you little still saved it. <laughs> I still saved it. Well, can you see how I, I'm really straining to get that off? So it was pretty full, which was kind of you know not terribly intelligent on my part, but anyway. Okay, so you can see these are what these are good for is things like. Uh, gesso, solid, gooey stuff. Or beads. Or beads, yeah. We have beads in some of them. Yes, we do. But just don't put anything swishy. <laughs> There's a really technical term No for swishy it. No content. swishy content in the little clip-on, snap-on. Uh, yeah, you have to get a pry bar to get them off. Yeah, okay. Now she'll be complaining about her finger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these are not for people with arthritis in the thumbs. Okay, back to that. All right, now I'm gonna put those out of the way. Mariah, help me remember because I want to—I do want to use some of those before we get through with all of this. Okay. All right, where are we here? All right. What else was I supposed to remind you of? 
All right, we're going on. I don't know. You got need to pay, take make a list there. I guess I need to be taking notes. She we go. does need to be taking notes. That's your job. All right. So basically, what I want on this, and you know, I probably should save some of that, but you know, I can muddle around and mix that same color pretty much. I, I mean, it wasn't complicated. Sandstone, brown. brown. Sandstone brown. Till I get this. Yeah. Brown. Okay. So I'm I'm not even gonna bother to clean that out. I'm just going to take and I, I know that I used to have a professor at Tech and he used to just shudder when he watched me. He's like, <laughs> she oh. Cooks, she cooks like this too. Yeah. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know. Nothing ever can be reproduced exactly. Well, isn't that what makes things original? Why would you want to, you know. All right. All right. That's really like awesome. So that was the amethyst Amethyst mixture. in with the goo that was already there. So we have a dirty purple. Why do we have a dirty purple? We have a dirty purple because we added yellow to violet. Yeah. We, take this. We, we could take this on the road. Maybe. I think we should take this on the road. Let's get our RV packed up and ready to go. <laughs> okay. Coming to a town near you once this <laughs> pandemic is over. Absolutely. Here we go. All right, now I must admit that I did do some of these. I don't know what happened to them. I oh, put goodness. them out here. Where are my little swatches that I did? And I said, you know, I even stapled the, ah, ah, oh my gosh. You know, that in itself is a miracle. But I did, this was the violet before, you know, we dumped it in with the yellow. And then this is the blue that's in the other little container. But look at that. What I noticed is that inside the circle, can you see it? inside can you see the it? circle, well, it? now don't be, oh, what drives me crazy is people put it up here and then go, oh my God, it drives me crazy. Could you just hold the damn thing still? Well, that's a, I think that's a, you know. Do you see it? Daughters versus mothers. We'll just yeah, say okay. it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop jiggling that stuff around. All right, now look at that. Is that not a beautiful brown? Oh my gosh. Are you all just, I need it on something white. Oh, here, no, 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 no. Here's my little pieces of paper that I tore off. Should we pause and talk about this paper? Because everybody asks about our paper. Our, yes, this paper right here, because you will notice, I'm going to go ahead and show you this very quickly. Make a little strip here. This is the paper that I talk about in all the videos that this is what we use or in any of the comments or anything, our go-to paper. We use it for everything. Everything, literally. Because it's on a roll, it's big, so we can make big things or we can make very small things. So, what are we noticing here? What we're noticing is, I'm trying to grab some it's fairly clean. Fairly clean. I don't know who's cleaning your boards. You need to talk to them. I do. I probably need to. But this is what's interesting. This is the craft paper that we use all the time. And I had those little strips because we tore them off from a, a journal that we made. But notice how the different paper is going to react differently. This is why you need your little strips, your test strips. Don't, you know, test them because it's not going to be the same as the other paper that you were using. Okay. Now, we're not even going to throw those away because I like that. I think that that is a really brilliant color there. Find me a better board there, Mariah, for my next little... Ooh, look at that one. That one might even be a brand new one. <gasps> Pristine. Fresh out. Okay. i got to pick this up here. All right. Now... Uh, did I show you my, my, I, I'm not getting out my long one because it takes up too much room. I'm just tearing this about the size that I'm thinking we'll yeah. need for tags. Tags or pockets. Tags or pockets. I'm leaving this a little longer so it can be a belly band. And I don't know who authorized you to slice and dice this paper. <laughs> I thought this was I, from my stash. Uh, that's nice to put that right in the middle, smack dab in the middle. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, now which one? Of the, okay, that's my blue one. This is mine. All right, starting on the back. 
Oh my goodness, look. Eggplant. <laughs> but look at the circles coming through to the back side. Now oh. I don't know if that's gonna be. If it'll stay like that. Don't know. Do not know this. This is the first rattle out of the box. What you're seeing here is a first time. Okay, remember, it's going to dry lighter. No, I'm not going to do anything else with that. I think that's just you absolutely brilliant. No, I think I probably want a yucky one. Okay. We'll put this over here for now. I'll hold that. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're, you're being very, okay. Very now, nice. look at this. I just, I love this little, I, I can't remember what it said, perfect, mm -hmm. which is really a word that's not in my vocabulary. No. Um, it's more mine. But I can, you know, put a cross out through it or something like that. Oh, yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, now I'm seeing this color is coming out here. But can you see how this and this are, they're still, they still match. I'm not too crazy about that green there. So, what do I need? Got red. green. Let's. Red. Whip a little red on. I'll we'll try some scarlet, which will take out the blue and the green at the same time. Scarlet's kind of your go to. Now we'll see if we can hit relatively that same spot. <laughs> now that's going to be kind of a challenge. You know, even if a little of it shows through, you know, do we care? Nah, not really. Okay, I'm not going to do it on those. I, I yeah. just will go with the plaid. All right, now this is kind of a, we've got a small pit here, but that's okay. Oh, we don't, we're not worried about that. All right, I'm going to clean up really quickly here, just a little bit simply because I want to do just some uh, colors in the background here. I just want to, yeah, let me, let's have that clean one dry. Because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these down onto my board and uh, just make them all, you know, kind of a, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards this blue. I like it. It's a little on the bright side, so we'll just add a little of that. Okay, that's wonderful. Let's add. It's not quite dark enough, I don't think. Turquoise, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Right there. Not in front of the turquoise. How about that? <laughs> uh, get this up just a little bit. Um, what do you mean, get it up? Take, take the chroma, take, oh, take it back up. I, I want to make it a little bit brighter. And I, the reason I want to have some of these is, Mariah, can you bring that back over here for just a sec? My, no, the ones on the board. Oh, yes. Is I'd like to have some of this blue, just in case, you know, I really do want to have a little bit. And you may say that chroma, she means intensity or saturation. Yes, thank you. But see, <laughs> look how lovely that looks together. And that, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that color there. Now, I can blue it out just a little bit more with another blue, which I will talk to you about, which is called Ultramarine. Ultramarine comes with a little bit of purple in it. 
I don't know, Mariah, can you find that in my... Bless your the heart. The other set here, too. Uh, pretty intense, so you don't need to sit there and, you know, beat on your dude for 15 minutes getting it in there, because you, you don't want a whole lot of it. <laughs> beat on your container. Don't beat on your container. <laughs> All right, so, whoops, where are we here? I need some more sparkly... Here you go. Here's your... Okay, so can you see? That's what we just put in there. And you can see it's already got a little bit of purple in it. So, it's it's called a cool, it's cool blue, not cool in the sense of, you know. <laughs> it's fun to hang out with? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that could be too. All right, I'm really liking that. I'm liking that because I can see that that's picking up a little bit more, but now we're going to the next, which we're going to add a tiny bit of brilliant red because it's a good, clean, cool, red, which is going to take us a little bit, I'm hoping, into the violet range. Now, again, I don't want to get too much of that in there. Just enough to get up a little bit. All right, let's see if I can do something here. This is the end that didn't get it. Now, I think it's important to talk about that if you were to only have the primary colors in these Oh, crystals okay. or in anything in, in just regular watercolors yeah you can create these additional the ultramarine the this the that you have to again just understand your color wheel okay yes if you want a blue violet all you have to do is add blue and violet if you have you want a red orange all you have to do is add some red to your orange so you mix your primaries, then you get your secondaries. Once you have your secondary colors, you start adding a bit more either yellow or red or this or that. Then you get your ultramarine or uh, really red, red, red. Yeah. <laughs> Orangey red. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Now, we know that this is contaminated with my, uh, whatchamacallit, so look at me washing my brush there. Which I, you know, I, I, yeah, okay. <laughs> that has been. Ooh, hey, look at that. And look, yeah. All right, let's look at what's happening here because this is the other thing. It's going it's to change. Going, it will change. Okay. It's drying. It's drying. But this is ma mainly what you're going to get here. But what is really cool that I think here is the inside of the circle is drying to a lighter color than the area around it. Well, it had the blue. It was printed blue. Yeah, exactly. But, where's one of my little, yeah. So that's what's, why it's happening that way. Isn't that wonderful? All right, so here's the end of the spectrum that we're working on here. And I, this probably I should go and soap it and yada yada, but I don't know how to do that. Um, you know, this isn't rocket science. We are not sending anybody to the moon. If we miss the mark, we'll just do it over. Okay. Okay, this is really, I just, I'm really, you know, loving this paper. And I really, you know, I don't know. I, I just thought it was kind of bling blingy, whatever. We've tried to use this multiple times, and we're always like, it's it's just too bright. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't go with a vintage or a worn or the junk journal stuff. Because that's kind of the projects that we've been working on here lately. I mean, I'm sure it's spectacular for, you know, a baby boy scrapbook or, um, I don't know, just something springy and more bright and whatever. But we needed it more subdued. And again, we're getting that lovely color on the back side that we have a white back now we have a blue back and this paper really is amazing in the fact that it it takes the color well and you know I haven't experiment oh there we go <laughs> perfect well that's definitely not perfect, part perfect. of <laughs> part of my working vocabulary um, and you can see why I love this with the edges here. Can you see how that torn edge, okay, here's a cut edge. Oh, this is great, I'm glad I didn't actually get that. See what happens with the torn edge? It soaks it in more. It does. It pulls it in. It pulls it in, and if you keep going along that edge there, you're gonna get a nice, nice darkened edge there. Okay, 
I'm not using that red over this because then we'll brown it out and I really, that's not what I want to do right now. Well, and I think, you know, this just shows that if you did want to make this more blue blue, so it's subdued in its brightness, meaning you don't have this contrast within the circles. Exactly. So you could use this paper a little bit more, maybe to write on. Um, it's just, it's a little less contrast. Right. But it's still uh, bright. All right, now let's just do a little experiment here. Okay, I'm wetting this down again. Ooh, careful. Our little... Yeah, I know. Oh. I'm knocking my oop de doo Okay, this is plain purple. And it, Mariah, would you get that out? So you can add this. You can let that just kind of, you know, go wherever and give it a bit of a spritz. And you, you have some effects there. Okay, this is plain purple, but you can see it pulls out to more of a blue violet. And it rims out on the inside to a red violet. And you can see that in these little hoop de doo things down there too. Okay, you can leave it like that. Or we can go back and brush it out. I'm going to leave that. Turn this over. Because I think you can see it. You can see it, what happens better when it's on the plain side rather than the hoop de doo side. All right. But you know, you got to move pretty fast on this because it, these little crystals do have a tendency to kind of stay in their place. But if you come back in and brush them afterwards, you get a much more subdued See what's happening there? You still have a little bit of the, the which I, I think is kind of I don't interesting. I don't mind it at all. But can you see the difference in the blues? Okay. Enough said on that. What do we need to do that we haven't done? What do I need to talk about? Reminding me to do. I don't know. You were going to go back to your um, stamp examples oh. there. I think this is a good point for that. Yes. Okay. So let's say that you, you were testing this out and you had your little, your little papers here, you know, in this color and had your little paper in. Hopefully I've got enough here that I can get some out of my... Oh, we still have one there. Okay. Well, there's you. You've got these little little pieces of paper. Of course, it's a good idea to let them dry, and it's a good idea not to have something else on your hands when you're doing it. Whatever. <laughs> and then here's, here's. Remember, we stamped with this. Okay, I'm putting that over there. Now, Mariah, what I need is I need some of the kind of wet ones. Okay. Oh, never mind. I'll just wet something here and. Well, you ahead. do have dried options there that you can, you know. Well, I do, but they've already seen those. Okay. okay. All right, we'll just tear this. This will be a nice little whatever. All right, so I'm going to wet this just with water. And then I'm going to put a little bit of color on it. Then I'm going to take this and just lay it on there. Now, I'm going to leave that for a little bit. And the reason I am is because it's creating a pattern on there. Leave it on there for a little while. And then when I pull it off, I'm going to have that shape. That is how I did that with some of these. That's how this was accomplished. Left it on there for quite a while. And you can see this also, um, there's another one, that little piece. That little piece. <laughs> there it is. There it is. But that, I, I, you know, 
there are just so many exciting things that you can do with this. And I'm, I I love it when I can go into this and I can say, okay, I, I don't have an agenda today. What I'm going to do, I'm going to experiment with colors. I'm going to come up with some things. Save these little guys because then they can come little pieces and parts. And I would love to tell you whose stamp this is, but I, I have no idea. It, it's one that we've, we've had for a while, a while and it was a Tuesday morning purchase. <laughs> But I use it all the time because it reminds me of chicken wire. Oh, well, it's honeycomb too. A little bit. Yeah, I guess. Whatever. It's not like exact. But. but these are all the little samples that I was doing, trying to get the right, you know, kind of coffee, mucky, swampy color. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? But all done with the watercolor crystal. All done. With, oh, and I would remind you, please do use a... Um, waterproof stamping ink just in case you decide to put this down someplace and it's slightly wet because then it's not going to bleed out bleed out oh, look at that let's just pick up some of that that's gonna be but that's pretty much it yeah and thank you for being here today and questions comments we love all of those things comment and below. comment below subscribe hit the little bell It'll remind oh, you yeah. when we have a new one. Yeah, it, it took me forever. I was going, you know, why she do she asked me? I said, Mariah, how do I get these? I, I really, I want to come back here because I really like what this person is doing. But I, I don't, how do I get them so they keep coming back? Yeah, yeah. it's the bell, folks. Hit the bell. <laughs> Hit the bell. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Oh. Thanks for watching. Okay. Bye. Bye.